So to get started, I've just sort of preloaded a search with the terms climate change, our basic top online news 2017 media collection for the US and you know, the last month of the year. And I did that just to give you guys an idea of the framework that we use when we start any search in Media Cloud, which is we start with some search terms, we start with a media source or media collection, and some date range to get us started. The search syntax that we use is based on Boolean queries. So you can search for words and quotation marks. You can use and or not as it as you would for any other Boolean search. You can use parentheses, asterisks, and really what you're looking for when you're thinking about your search terms is you want them to be as concise as possible, but you also want them to be as specific as you can get for the search that you're running. Um, sometimes, depending on the subject matter you're looking at, that is, you know, a one word search. Sometimes if you're looking at something really broad, like a development topic or a public health issue, your search might be a lot longer. It goes both ways. When you're thinking about media sources, we start with US top online news from 2017 because we think that that's a representative collection of online media sources in the US. This collection was put together by the Pew Research Center and they come out with a collection every year. So in addition to the 2017 ones, there are ones from 2018. The collection for 2019 will be coming out probably later this summer, assuming that they're still on schedule given the pandemic. And something that I'm going to point out here is that you can always open a collection in a new tab and then it'll take you to source manager where you can look at that collection in more detail. So when you open source manager like this, you'll be able to see the list of sources in the collection. You'll be able to see how many stories we're pulling in for day and you'll also be able to see when we got our first story for a given source. Some things that I want to point out here are the first stories for a given source will depend on when that source entered our system. So if you enter a source into our system today by submitting a source suggestion, then you'll probably see the first story for that source start to appear tomorrow or the day after. If a source entered our system really early on, such as the Drudge Report in 2011, then we're going to have much more comprehensive coverage about that. Because all of our stories are pulled into the system via RSS feeds at the moment, that's really the way that you're going to get stories and sources coming in. You'll also sometimes see that there are story counts for a given source that are lower or that have maybe dialed on to zero. The reason this happens is because maybe a source has closed or maybe it stopped publishing. That doesn't mean that we remove the source from the collection though, because it's possible that if someone is researching the years during which that source was active, having those stories against their search would be really important. And something I want to point out is that when you're looking at Source Manager, you'll actually be able to see some featured collections when you get started. So here are those Pew collections that you would normally be looking at for 2018. But we also have this geographic collections feature. And these collections have been curated by our team over time. And they'll show you, you know, the national or state and local level media that we have for any given country. Now, this is a pretty long list of countries, so I'm not going to scroll through all of it. But I will point out that something that we often find very helpful and very interesting and productive is that if there's a researcher who's more well-versed in a given region's media than we are, it's often very helpful for them to come to us and say, hi, I'd like to add sources to these collections. And then they can you know, provide us with a CSV of those URLs and we can add them to the system to help make the collections more robust over time. Something I'll also point out is if there's a set of media sources that's not in a default collection that you're interested in looking at, you can also come to us with a CSV and you can say, I would really be interested in a custom collection around this particular subject and we can make that collection for you so it's easier for you to search for those sources in the system together. Now I'm going to toggle back over to our explorer search. And I'm going to actually take us to a pre-made comparative query of climate change related terms. So in a comparative query, I've used this add query feature to dig into three particular terms related to climate change, global warming, climate change, and the phrase climate crisis, which has been started to be used more recently in discourse about climate change. 
And I'm running a comparative query because I think what we're going to see is a really interesting change in time over how these three words are being used to discuss climate change, broadly speaking. To make my search more comprehensive, in addition to the top online news collection, I've also added collections for our U.S. national collection, our state and local collection for the U.S., and top sources from 2018. When we're thinking about the distinction between national level sources and state and local, this is local, this is sort of the difference between, say, the New York Times or the Los Angeles Times, which you would find in our national collection, and state and local might be something more like the Atlanta Journal Constitution. So roughly speaking, state and locals, including all of your state media, all of your local media, and national is really thinking about, say, USA Today, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, those bigger ones that people all over the country might be consuming. I've run this search from January 2016 to May 2020, so I'm really trying to understand the last four years of coverage. And with that, I'm going to scroll down and we're going to see that Explorer gives us three tabs, attention, language, and entities. In our attention tab, we see first and foremost this graph of attention over time, which is really going to help you compare the attention paid to queries over time so you can understand how they're covered. One of the things that I highly recommend doing when you're running an attention search is click view options so that you can view the normalized story percentage. I think that it's a helpful way to compare collections and terms relative to each other. And something we see when we run a search like this is that the phrase global warming started being used and has been pretty consistent over time. It's the blue one. We see that over time as well, climate change has been a pretty constantly used term. We see that it has some peaks in 2017. We see that coverage really goes up in the middle of 2018 and onwards, but what we also see is that the very specific word climate crisis doesn't really become used until 2019. If I click on the words global warming and climate change to make those go away for a minute, we see that climate crisis has actually gone up quite significantly since the beginning of 2019. And a lot of this relates to how news organizations have been using phrases related to climate change in um, 2019, around April, March last year, The Guardian actually changed their style guide to say that climate crisis is the phrase that they're going to use when they refer to climate change. We also saw other news organizations start to adopt that syntax at that time. So that could be a large part of why this spike is coming up. Another reason that we see these peaks start to show up around climate change, global warming, and climate crisis in 2019 is because in 2019 we started to see the climate change school strikes happen, which were led by Greta Thunberg, and we also saw the global climate strikes happen. So there's been a huge spike in people doing things related to the subject of climate change, which of course has affected media coverage in an attendant way. Going through the rest of our attention tab, we'll see that the next thing you can get is these bubbles that are really showing you the volume of coverage in a comparative way. Again, I would recommend going to view options and viewing by story percentage instead of story count so that you can compare the terms relative to each other. And the last thing you'll see is sample stories. Now, these sample stories are just a random sample of stories matching each term in your query. So it's worth pointing out at this point that Media Cloud runs story level searches. So this is showing us any story where climate change has been mentioned or any story where global warming has been mentioned. If you're interested in doing searches for terms in proximity to each other, I would recommend using the Boolean syntax for a proximity search. So that can help you do more of a sentence level search if that's what you're going for. It's worth pointing out as well that you'll see a download options button here. So you can download all of the stories as a CSV file to do further analysis on. Unfortunately, for copyright reasons and because we want this project to keep existing without us getting sued, we cannot actually give you the text of all of the stories. That's something that you would have to go forward and work on on your own. However, we can give you the links to all of the stories along with their metadata.
And I'm seeing a quick question about sources, which is, is it possible to build a custom collection for me media sources? Yes, absolutely. If you go to Media Cloud's support page, you'll see in the support page a um, source collection sample CSV, which has the template that we would use for such a collection along with the metadata fields that we would need to do something about it. Of course, there are important ones like what is the URL for your source? And then there are less important ones such as where is this source from? And if you complete a CSV like that, then you can send that over to us and we can help you create a custom collection for the sources you're looking at. The next question I'm seeing is, is there a limit of stories to download as a CSV? There's not a limit per se, but I will say that if you hit a certain threshold, it's going to be a really slow process. At some point, if you know, you're looking at trying to download a CSV of 100,000 stories, it's probably more effective to you know, use the API, which we'll get into later, rather than just clicking this button and waiting for an indeterminate amount of time. I'll, and, in, I'll just jump in with one more thing there worth mentioning. Yeah, of course. You have it is a, an open system, but we have quotas. So um, there are quotas in the amount of hit of like the amount of usage and downloads you can do. If you run into that, it'll start throwing an error saying you've run out of your quota. At that point, just email us um, again at that support at Media Cloud. And usually there's a way we can help you craft a more efficient version uh, because we know the system really well, um, or, there, or we can bump your quota up. So another thing to keep in mind. Okay, and I'm seeing another question about how big can a source be? If you're asking about how many stories a source can publish a day that will pull into our system, there's not really a limit on that per se. Rahul, please tell me if I'm wrong. But if you're also asking about how big can a collection be, again, there's no limit. If you want to put 300 sources in a collection, you can do that. It's useful perhaps to just think about a source in general for us is a we're moving towards a world where a source is just one domain. There's a handful of exceptions, but you know, a big, uh, a big newspaper that publishes a lot of stuff. One of the ways we ingest it is through RSS feeds. Um, so uh, we, we don't do that for a million different sources. It's about 60 or 70 different thousand different sources that we ingest every day. Um, and those are mostly tuned to our projects and our collaborator projects. Um, but we can ingest a lot of stories, but we only do it for things where it's worth it. We don't, we're not Google, right? We can't just download the whole internet. So there's a balance there. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and take us to our next tab, which is language. And again, if you guys have questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat like people have been doing. The first widget that we see in the language tab is top words. So we'll be showing you here the top 100 words that are used against each of our queries. So we see that for global warming, you know, this is really being led by words like climate, emissions, Trump, scientists, greenhouse, Paris. If we ch switch over to climate change, we see that that this changes to Trump global Paris warming scientists emissions like the top words are not particularly different. If we switch over to climate crisis, the framing here changes quite significantly. So instead of seeing things about climate or Paris, we start seeing crisis, global, activist, democratic. Greta Thunberg's name pops in there. We start seeing words about fuel emissions. So what we're getting is that depending on the type of search that you're running for climate change, broadly speaking, the framing related to each of these three terms can be a little bit different. Now I'm seeing a question about, we've done a number of stories on migration. How can I find out what sources that you use for those stories? Um, in order to find out what sources we've used for any of our research projects, I would definitely recommend going to the research project or that description itself. Um, generally speaking, when we run sources on the US, we use a couple different collections, and those would be the ones that we featured here, US national, US state and local, top online news, and top sources. I know that my colleague Emily in Dulaway did a piece on immigration coverage that we're going to go into in a case study later, and when Emily did that piece of research, she actually looked at specific sources comparing, say, the New York Times or the Los Angeles Times or, or other media resources. And if you wanted to do something like that, you can actually go into this Add Media tab, which is sort of like a glimpse or a snapshot of what you see in Source Manager. And you can search by featured collections, geographic collections, collections that you may have starred in our system, 
or specific sources that you might have starred. So I was working on something related to Australian media a while back, which means that I have these five Australian sources saved, but you could add any one of those and then run searches comparing specific sources to one another as well. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is switch over to this thing called a word space model, which is something that an MIT master's student named Becky Bell developed while working with Rahul a while back. And I would say that the word space models are definitely more fruitful to look at and compare over time when looking at Topic Mapper. But when you're looking at Explorer, they can also be really interesting to help you get a general idea of how a subject is being talked about. The way that you want to use these is to really look at which words are used together to understand sub conversations or specific narrative framings that are happening for a given topic. So if I click over to say climate crisis, then I'll see that words like emission, fossil, and pollution are being used together. If I go over to another cone, I'll see a lot of very political terms such as Trump, democratic activist. If I switch over to global warming, then you'll start seeing words like emissions or greenhouse or scientists being used together. So it's really helpful to understand how certain issues are being framed. And I'm seeing a question that I'm going to toss over to Rahul since, you know, he helped build these, which is, can you elaborate a little bit on how this distance is computed? Sure. Um, uh, one of the, this, is, uh, this is a visualization of a, of a word to back model. Um, and the reason that Ashka said that there's more useful in topics is that we build a word to vec model with word embeddings in a topic from the corpus of that topic. This is Explorer, so this is using the Google News corpus, but you know, this is where we get to say like, we do fancy machine learning and AI, and then it helps us get funding. Um, so in this case, in Explorer, the, to be honest, the chart is like, you know, it's clues, but in a topic, it's actually really useful. This is a, two, uh, a 2D dimension reduction with PCA, uh, and then we're mapping that onto this space. Uh, there's a paper that we've been working on that tries to justify that. It's a, actually a really fun debate to talk about. We find that specifically in topics and sometimes in Explorer, it gives us good clues for what words are used in similar contexts. So this, the way I usually explain it is that any of those conical slices, looking at it as a radiograph, is those words that show up in, in, like a, in a short arc distance from each other are ones that are used in similar contexts with other with similar words around them. And if you understand the math better than I do, then you know about the probability computation that goes into that. Uh, that's the sort of two minute description. Great, thank you so much. I just wanna to touch on one thing Rahul said, which is that Explorer is a really good way to get an idea of what you're looking at and what is happening and then moving that over into Topic Mapper. A huge part of the research processes that we use when we're running projects is that we start with a lot of different test searches in Explorer and we poke through all of these tabs and all of these parameters to really drill into what we're looking for or to start getting an idea of what we might find when we're looking at Topic Mapper. It's a way for us to start formulating better and stronger research questions that we can then translate over into a topic when we're running it. So that's just something I wanted to point out because it's a really part, it's a really important part of an iterative process. And to be fair, there are entire research projects that we've run on Explorer. There's no reason why you have to go make a topic for any given project. That being said, if you want to make a topic, I would always say start with an Explorer search first. So the last piece that we see in our language tab is this comparison of top words. So you'll be able to see a comparison of say global warming to climate change and what are the words unique to both of those terms and what are the words used in both. If I change climate change to climate crisis, we're gonna start seeing a difference here as well. When you look at climate crisis, words that you see include protesters, youth, solutions. So again, the framing and the conversation changes depending on which words you look at. And finally, the other piece that you see in the language tab is top themes. So this is really helping us understand how news coverage can be grouped into themes. And it's based off of the New York Times annotated corpus. So you'll see that when we're talking about global warming, the themes are really global warming, weather, the environment, politics, and government. If I switch over to climate change, same themes, slightly different percentages of prevalence. That's interesting to know. And if I switch over to climate crisis, again, same themes, but slightly different percentages and prevalence. So 
that's also something that can be really useful to compare depending on what type of comparative searches you're running or if you're interested in thematic categorization. The last tab that we pull up for an explorer search is entities. So this is looking at top people, top organizations, and geographic coverage over time. When we're thinking about top people, this is really showing us who are the people that are most mentioned in coverage about this subject. And if I toggle between, say, global warming, climate change, and climate crisis, you'll see that the names do change over time. Something that we've noticed pretty consistently since 2016 is that Donald Trump has kind of sucked a lot of the oxygen out of many media ecosystems. So for subjects where he is relevant, he shows up a lot, and even subjects where he's less relevant, or you would be surprised to hear of his relevance, he does show up as well. It sort of, it's, a, it's an attestation to maybe how prominent his name has become in general public discourse. So there are absolutely times when I can run a search on something that I would not expect to see his name on and still see his name pop up. So that's just something to keep in mind. The next thing that you'll see is top organizations. So again, this is looking at what are the organizations that are mentioned most in coverage. And you'll see that comparing these queries, the organization's order and prevalence changes a little bit. One of the things that you'll notice is that sometimes news organizations do pop up as top organizations. And this is because this type of detection is really hard to do. So you will see something like AP, Associated Press, CNN, and it can be sometimes be difficult to parse out, is this something where the news organization is part of the story or is this something where, you know, the news organization is reporting on this story and their byline has just sort of snuck in. And something I would say to that effect is it really, really helps to have a strong knowledge of what subject matter you're looking at. So if we're thinking about the Harvey Weinstein scandal, then something that we noticed is that, for instance, the reporters who covered the Weinstein story at the New York Times and the New Yorker, they eventually started becoming a part of the story themselves. They were going to do interviews. They were being interviewed by other sources. So in that case, their organizations were actually kind of, you know, part of organizations where people who are being quoted in the story worked. So if you understand that to be a facet of the story that's important to you, maybe that shifts how you interpret the top organizations or top people that you're looking at for a given topic. And then the last piece of the entity section is really looking at geographic coverage. So this is a heat map that shows you the countries that were most often the focus of stories. Now for our climate, for our global warming search, we're seeing a really strong focus on the US, a bit of a smaller focus on Australia, Brazil, some countries in Europe. If I switch over to climate change, that changes a bit. We see a stronger focus in Australia and Europe. And if I switch over to climate crisis, Again, a lot of the countries are the same, but the level of focus can change a little bit. It's also worth keeping in mind that, you know, I ran this search against US collections. So this is why the US is going to be so prominent. If I went up to my media sources and I had changed my search to also be looking at Swedish media or to be looking at Indian media, I would expect these to look very different. And I'm seeing a couple questions here. One is, do you have a comparative study about various methods you explored for this? Um, I don't think we have a comparative study about methods that we've used, but one thing that I would highly recommend is going to the Media Cloud website where we actually have um, on our support page a set of case studies and we also link to other previous pieces of research. And I think that's a really good way to compare methods that have used that have been used in projects that we know about. Um, another question I'm seeing is, did you do three separate searches and add them together, or was this set up as one comparative search? So for this, I set up three separate searches that are essentially compared to one another. Um, if I toggle from this global warming section to climate change, then I have the ability to change the collections that I'm running the word climate change against, or the dates range as well. And then another question is, if the query is at country level, is it possible to see the map results at state level? 
Unfortunately, the query itself is at country level and the map is at country level. If you ran this against state collections, and we do have 50 collections for the states, then you would be able to compare the states to one another, but the map itself would remain at the country level. You can down, so this is just to give some a uh, slightly more detailed answer to that. The, the geotagging that we're doing, as you probably noticed, is the only one that's disambiguated. So we figure out that like, you know, Brazil means Brazil, uh, or that London, we guess that it means London, England. We don't do that with the other two entities. So with this, we're tagging a, each story with both the country and the top level admin within a country that it's about. So we're tagging a story with uh, country and state slash provinces. So if you download this CSV, I think it actually does include both the country tags and the state slash province tags. So you'd have to filter the download results to, to catch the state provinces and not the country one. But I think you can do that. And, and certainly with, uh, and, and that just uses the API, which we can show you later. So I think you can do that to generate a map yourself. Yeah. And that really closes out the demo portion of Explorer. And, uh, oh, I see another question. Do these word searches include stories from sites known for spreading disinformation? If not, why not? That's a really good question. And if you'll remember, Arrestus mentioned something about partisanship collections and how our teammates over at Berkman really worked on building those out. If I was interested in doing a search for missing disinformation, what I would actually do is I would go into ad media and instead of looking at these collections, which are really curated collections for mainstream news sources, what I would do is I would go into featured collections and you'll see that we have these collections for left, center left, center, center right, and right. And depending on, you know, which of these collections you're looking at, there's not a lot of misinformation in the center collection for obvious reasons. These are the collections that I would search against if I was trying to pull out mis and disinformative narratives. Great, so that concludes the um, demo portion of the explore.